Hello, Didi TJ, and welcome back to my channel. Uh, today, I have another Mastercam tip for you. Uh, this is a case study when we uh, want to machine a chamfer inside of the park. Okay. And this this park I use for the demonstration. You can see uh, this is the cutaway of the park. You can see we have a red arrow here. Um, that's a 25 degree chamfer. Yeah. And one more thing, this chamfer is not laying somewhere on the top of the park like this one and this one. Um, it's inside a hole like this and it's a little deep. Uh, yeah, here. So, uh, let me turn on the full park for you to can see. Yeah, this is the full park and this is uh, the chamfer we want to machine. I make a, a cutaway so you can easily see it. Okay, so for for this part like this, we may think about first we may think about um, a chamfering tool pad with a, a chamfer tool right like this, uh, like this one I use. Yeah, this may be the easiest way to to do. Just uh, mill it with a chamfering tool. Yeah, but uh, the angle of the tool must be the same with the angle of the part here, 25 degree. But you know, uh, 25 is not a popular number, right? You may uh, normally work with 45 or 30 degree. Um, 25 is not so popular. So something we can call it special. And uh, with something special, we need to to do the customizing. So we need to make the tool for it. Uh, the customizing tool may be a little bit expensive because it's not uh, popular. It's special, and something special is something expensive. And the, your tool supplier, you need to order it, and they need to they need the one or more day or more to to grind the tool and to make the tool for you. So um, with this way, time and cost is uh, uh, a thing we we should concern about. So this is the first. The first way we want to we, we can do is using a chamfering tool with a chamfer tool pad right okay and we go to the next solution if you don't want to cut it with a chamfering tool uh, we can um, do a 3d milling you can select any 3d tool pad you want for example i have a semi so finish contour here for doing the, the finishing of this chamfer you can see uh, I use a, a bull mill, this is a 8mm bull mill with radius 1. Okay. And I go like this, like uh, what now we normally do. And with uh, this surface, you can see uh, there's one uh, thing that is close to this wall here. You can see uh, this is the hole, and this chamfer is close to the hole. So uh, you can see we, we can use a, a ball mill, right? We can we cannot uh, we cannot use a like a millimeter ball mill because if we use a big radius, it will hit into the wall here. So we need to use a ball mill with small radius, small corner radius like this, in in order to keep uh, the tune far away from from this uh, vertical wall, right? But there is one thing with the small corner radius that is the, the surface finish, right? When you uh, use some tool with small radius, you need to go very, very uh, small step down like this in order to get a good surface finish. And uh, yeah. So, um, with small step down, we need uh, more time to, to machine the surface. So, this can be a a time uh, yeah a time problem we need uh, to go very 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 uh, small step down like this so it may take time to machine this surface so I just talk about uh, two solutions we can use for this K but uh, in this video I, I want to show you another way to do that um, so if you have a fire action machine uh, you can uh, use this way as a tip okay Instead of using this uh, solution, we can use a, a normal 45 degree, uh, which I, I believe is very popular and you can uh, find any, anywhere in your shop. Uh, so we will combine a, a 45 degree chamfer with a, a 5 axis tool pad to machine uh, this chamfer. Very easy way. Okay, let me show you. Let me show you first 
how to make it and uh, I will explain um, detail about it later if you if you want to see uh, how it works you can um, watch the video to the uh, the end of that or uh, if you want if you just want to see how, how we can do it uh, you can skip the, um, the last section of the video where I just do the explanation explanation okay so to do that uh, you go to the um, 5x toolpath here as I say we need the a 5x machine and uh, yeah 5x toolpad so in this case I'm gonna use the projector toolpad this is a very good toolpad I uh, I can see it's I can say it's my favorite toolpad to do a lot of nice thing okay we got a projector toolpad and now I select the chamfer tool I, I gonna use for that okay and we go to the cut pattern here where we can select the, the curve for, for the tool okay let me turn off the section and turn on the full part you can see now I can select the, the bottom curve of the chamfer like this okay it's good the right direction and next we uh, need to select the dry surface this will uh, control the tool next to it. okay I just select the the chamfer surface for for the dry surface okay so set a, a tight tolerance so we we got a, a nice surface okay and then 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 in the cutting side we should select um, left so by selecting uh, the left or right we can uh, move the tool tip or the tool easily instead of uh, using a center so you can see when you uh, select center you cannot uh, change the, the offset value so I'm gonna select left here and you can see we have a cutting side offset we will use it later okay and we move next to the tool next to control where we can uh, control the, the tilting exit In this case I can select 5 exit set a smaller maximum angle step you want and in the tool axis control, you should select um, a surface with tilt. Okay, with this option, you can tilt the tool uh, at an angle you want. You just select surface. You are unable to to tilt it. Okay. So we select this second option, and I just leave it it zero, and uh, you can see uh, what happened. And then I can change it later. Okay. We can use some leading in leader, but. Uh, I should turn it off right now so you can see it easy, easily. Okay, change the tool plane, change the linking. Okay, it's just it's automatic. Uh, okay, let it calculate and we can see what happened next. Level, I turn on the park away, cut away. Okay, so this is the tool pad we have. Mm -hmm. You can see the tool tip or the tool contact uh, the surface at the, the curve we selected, and the the tool exit is now uh, the the normal vector of the surface. You can see like this. Okay, so we, we can uh, leave it like this. Because it, it's gonna hit the part. We need to tilt the tool a little bit, right? So, um. This is a 45 degree chamfering tool, very popular. So uh, our purpose is we want to this uh, the tool will contact this surface uh, using this edge. So we need to tilt the tool 45 degree is equal to the angle of the chamfering tool we have. So in other, we if we don't have a 45 degree, if we have a, a 60 degree, we just tilt it 60 degree. Okay. You can see we have a tilt angle at side of the cutting direction. We use this one. You can see this is the explanation. So we we have a we use a 45 degree chamfer. We need to tilt it 45 degree. This can be minus or positive. You need to, you can input and, and see if it tilt in the correct direction or not. If if it not tilt in the correct direction, you can uh, set it at minus angle. Okay. You can see here we just change the tilting angle to 45 and we have a correct contacting 
yeah you can see it's look correct right this is what we have after we tilting the tool and we have another problem here because and because the tool tip it can take uh, with the curve we have some collision here between the upper part of the tool with this vertical wall we, we want we only want to to shift the, this tip um, down a little bit so we have a higher cutting speed also um, we we can avoid the collision so to move this uh, this tip down you can go back to here in the uh, cut pattern and you can see there's one thing called cutting side offset you can move it a little bit like uh, I can try one millimeter and pause it again uh, calculate it again and you can see um, what happened now I move the tool one millimeter you can see the tool is now going down and it's, it's, uh, we can avoid a collision here but there's one thing that is not uh, it is not contact with the park anymore like this we have an offset here yeah this this offset and uh, it's not good right now the tool is not contact with the park anymore we got something like this the tool cutting in uh, on the air like this so we need to move the contact um, light uh, to the correct position right and this is how we do it I, I, I will show you how to do it first and then I will do the explain, explanation later so we have something called that uh, utility okay you go to the utility uh, in here you have a play where you where you can uh, shift the tool down or up it depends on you now we need to yeah, I'm gonna show you the tip is a little bit high now we need to shift this tip down a little bit along the tool axis you can see so we back to the tool path parameter and we use this one in utility uh, we you can see um, we use a one millimeter offset and because this is a 45 degree chamfer so this one we should input minus one I will explain about it later if you use uh, a different uh, chamber tool like 60 degree uh, this number can be different should be different with this number okay this is the most popular way we do with a 45 degrees so this value will be the same with the offset we used before okay we just uh, change to the minus so we can see the tool down okay now I calculate the tool pad again and see if we have the con correct contact yeah now you can see uh, we have the correct contact position we just shift the tool down yeah like this yeah and that's the tip for today very easy right you you give a, an offset for the tool and you need to uh, use the tool ship you just ship it down to com compensate for that offset okay now you can see the tool contact with the chamfer and you can uh, uh, move the tool down a little bit by incre increasing the, the offset value here for example instead of 1 I use 1.2 and because I use 1.2 I need to shift the tool 1.2 uh, millimeter yeah I repeat it just um, because this one we use uh, 45 degrees so the seep down value will be the same with the offset value here very easy right if you use another chamfer tool like 60 degree this will be different value so you need to um, take into account this I ship the tool 1.2 millimeter to give it back to the correct position like this this look like a good contact point right I can 
give it some lead and lead out motion uh, we can go to the linking here you lead in and you lead out you lead in and lead out I also you this for play okay and we can define the lead in and lead out motion here I'm gonna put a small lead in and lead out for that You can see we have a lead in and lead out. You can also put some um, uh, rough roughing part, uh, roughing here. You can put some multi pass if you want. Okay, so this is how it works. Very simple, right? We had a nice tool pad. Let's do the simulation. So this is how we machine a 25 degree chamfer with a 45 degree chamfering tool. Very easy. This could go like this, and this is what we got. Okay, so that is just the first section of the video where I show you how we can use a 45 degree chamfering tool to machine any angle chamfer in a park uh, using a 5x project curve tool pad. Okay, and this is the next section section of the video where I just do the explanation so you you can see how it works. You can skip this uh, section of the of the videos if you don't see it necessary. Okay. So, to make it easy to understand, I'm gonna I'm gonna change something first. I'm gonna remove the lead in and lead out motion. Okay, I'm gonna turn them off here, and in the cut bottom here, I'm gonna remove the offset value, and I also remove the shifting value, the tool shifting, shifting where is it? In the utility here now, I uh, set it back to zero. Okay. Now we, uh, <coughs> sorry, I forgot to uh, to change the tool uh, tooling exit. I also need to uh, go to tool exit. Okay, I already set it to zero. So now we uh, we don't tilt tilt the tool. We just use the we just use the the surface normal to to control it. Okay, so this is what happened can see the tool contact with the surface at the tip and the tool exit is the, the normal vector of this thread surface you can see it uh, perpendicular to the surface at the, the at the contact point like this so you can see this is the first contact point of the tool with the surface I made uh, a model you can see that uh, I call this you can see number four it is the tool okay it's like this so this is the tool and this contact point and this angle this is a normal vector of the surface okay and what happened when we do it when we do it 45 degree like this it keep the contact point and it rotate the tool axis like this uh, let it calculate this will be like this so you can see this contact point is the same with the, the last the last one the tool just to 45 degree okay it's gonna be like this I'm gonna show you okay 
this circle re re represent the tool center okay this will be like this when we are setting the tilting angle it will to 45 degree like this oh it should be minor yeah this is what happened when we uh, set the tilting angle because we use a 45 degree chamfering tool so we need to tilt it 45 degree so we have a contact so the tool will contact with the part uh, on a line not a point okay so this is what happened when we set it 45 degree tilting okay and next when we give it an offset here uh, on a cutting side offset for example one millimeter or 1.2 and see, let's see what happened on this case it's gonna be uh, it's gonna rotate the tool first rotate the tool axis first and then it do the shifting uh, and it do the offset this is what we have yeah when we uh, we set the offset you get something like this so you can see it rotate the tool axis first and then it do the offset so the tool now uh, being far away from the surface yeah you can see after rotating the tool axis it move it it move the tool now yeah by the uh, offset value so so this is the, the strategy is it used first it rotate the tool and then it it using the offset to offset the tool out a little bit it's not um it's not the uh, offset first and do the rotating it do the rotate rot rotating first it do the tilting first so on this case uh, if we, we want to uh, move the tool back to the correct contact position we need to find a value um, how to shift the tool down right I can see you here I can show you this is uh, uh, Okay. Let's check this. This line is the uh, one point one point two. Uh, this re represent the, the the offset value. Okay. So this is what happened. This is what happened when we uh, use the this this offset value. Okay. After rotating or after tilting the tool axis, it's gonna move the tool now by the offset value yeah like this oh, yeah it's move the tool now 1.2 like this move so you can see the second is tilting the tool first using the the first contact point here and then it's move the tool now it's not move the tool first right it's rotate the tool first it's tilting the tool and after that it's do the offset so we know the step one we we we, we are gonna know how to to shift the tool okay we know the value we should uh, shift the tool because this is a 45 degree angle so the shift down value will be the same with this uh, offset value so to do that we just shift the tool down 1.5 uh, sorry 1.2 millimeter same with the offset value we use so this will represent the the shifting value okay I can message for you so you can easy to see uh, yeah oh oh uh, okay Move it out a little bit and move it in. So now we're gonna make the tool shift. So if after we shift the tool 1.2, the tool center it should be here. Okay, let me show you. Now 
now we go back to the utility and set the sitting value 1.2 minus okay it's very easy with 45 degree chamfering tool we don't need to calculate much but if you use a for a, a 60 degree or 30 degree you need to do some calculation I'm not good at uh, mathematic you can see now the tool shifting here that's the shifting value that's the the, the shifting value in the the vertical the tool axis direction yeah so you know that 1.2 like this so the step point is tilting the tool uh, applying the offset and then shift it down like this yes and we got the correct position right so that's in my explanation i i hope you can understand it and 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 know how it works and we know the second we know how to deal with it okay uh yeah that's the, the video for today i hope it will be useful in some case you may uh, see some kind of this in the future and you know how to use it okay uh thank you for watching and goodbye for now see you in the next video bye bye